John chapter number 8. John chapter number 8. Today we celebrate the 4th of July. It's our Independence Day. And why we're wearing a red, white, and blue Sunday here. Uh, don't always uh, wear our red pants. But on July 2nd, 1776, the Continental Congress voted in favor of our independence. And two days later, it was July 2nd, and two days later on uh, the 13 colonies, they adopted the Declaration of Independence as a historical document. And what it was on July 4th, 1776, it marked the birth of, uh, of our nation and American independence. And today, July 4th, 2021, 245 years later, we're still celebrating and we're still patriotic and we're still shooting off fireworks and still have the same freedom and the same independence. And it's mainly because those that still fight for our country and still love this country and the country still means something to them. But John 8, and verse number 31, if you'll stand for the reading of God's word, it'll be John 8, and verse number 31. Stand if you're able. If you're not, you can be seated. But John 8 and 31 says this, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you're my disciples indeed. And ye, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I'll tell you, we, we are free, but the freest you'll ever be is when you let the truth make you free. It says, They answered him, and we be of Abraham's seed, and we were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? And Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is a servant, is, is the servant of sin. And, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you, Lord, for each and every one that's gathered out in your house. Lord, we thank you for those in the parking lot, those that might listen online later, and that may share it online on Facebook, YouTube. And, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that everybody may hear this. But here's the thing. We, we want to honor you and uplift you. And, and Lord, we're... we're ecstatic about our freedom and our independence here in their country but we got a decision to make this morning and we got to choose uh, our, our freedom in our spirit freedom in our soul this morning and give our hearts to you even if we're saved we got to give our hearts to you and even if lost most importantly we got to give our hearts to you and that way we can celebrate freedom every day of our life in jesus name amen as you drove up to church this morning, I guess some of you drove down from up the road, but uh, you probably have seen at some point in another the big freedom sign that's out in front of the church here. Uh, I, I hope you've seen it, and I hope you have freedom in your own heart. Uh, I hope you have, you've got freedom in Christ, but I hope you have freedom and you've thought about your freedom in the United States of America. Well, today we celebrate America and our American independence, and it's July 4th, and it's Independence Day. That Declaration of Independence was signed uh, July 4th, 1776, and uh, here we are 245 years later, and we're celebrating independence just as patriotically as we ever have. But here's the thing about it. About two years prior uh, to the signing of this Declaration of Independence, uh, Patrick Henry, he made a speech at the Second Virginia uh, Convention. It was on March 23, 1775 at St. John's Church in Richmond, Virginia. And Patrick Henry, he was credited here with having swung the balance. And what he did is he convinced uh, this convention to pass a resolution that, were, that would allow those troops out of Virginia to fight in the Revolutionary War. Now, a couple of people that was in attendance at this speech was Thomas Jefferson and then George Washington. I mean, you may have heard of both of those. But they were there, and they were listening to Patrick Henry's speech in Richmond, Virginia. And during that speech, I guarantee you know a phrase that he said and a phrase that you know. And he said this, give me liberty or give me death. I bet you've heard that before. Just the phrase liberty or death has been used countless times uh, just all throughout history. Uh, in the national anthem of Uruguay, 
Yeah, it's, uh, and, and in Chile, the, both of those national anthems use that liberty or death. And by the way, that's uh, Uruguay's where Clay Dale uh, Missionary is headed. And they use that in, the, in their anthem. Also in the Russian Civil War, Indonesian Revolution, the French Revolution, they all had that phrase coined to them, give me liberty or give me death. I want liberty or death. And I know Patrick Henry was at the point, he said he was wanting freedom, he was wanting liberty, and what he meant was, I, I'm, I'm willing to fight for it. I'll either take, I'll take death and I'll fight for it, or I'll take liberty. I want one or the other. You may say, well, what are you saying, preacher? Where are you getting at? What I'm saying is on July 4th, 2021, this day that we're at, and this hour that we're at, we have the same decision that we've got to make. Do we want liberty or do we want death? Which one do you want? Do you want liberty? Give me liberty or give me death. I want to preach on this thought for just a moment out of this text in John 8 on liberty or death. And I'm going to give you three things out of this text that the Lord uh, showed me here. And the first thing is, is there was a declaration made. There's a declaration made, really, in every one of our hearts. Now, the declaration, what a declaration is, is a formal announcement of the beginning of a state of a condition. Now, if you make a declaration, you're making a formal announcement. You're making a, a statement. It's formal. And that's what the declaration is. Well, July 4th, 1776, they signed that Declaration of Independence. And what that was was making an announcement. It was making an uh, announcement to everyone that we were a free and a sovereign nation. Now, you may say, where are you going with this, preacher? What are you trying to say? Well, on March 11th, 1984, I was born. And guess what? There was another declaration made. And that declaration made the, the day I was born, March 11th, 1984, it was another declaration. Here was the declaration that I'm a sinner, that I was born in sin, conceived in sin, and the second I took my first breath, as innocent, as cute a baby as I know I was, I was a sinner. I'm sure I was cute. Ain't no baby cute, let's be honest. They're all toothless, no hair. Grandpa was on there, ain't no baby cute. Everybody will look at babies and say, hey, hey that looks like so-and-so. It do not look like so-and-so. No teeth, no hair. It looks like anybody, like Grandpa. But you got the Declaration of Independence and a declaration made. But as cute as those babies were, on March 11, 1984, when I was born, I was a declaration was made. And it wasn't really a signed piece of paper. I guess there was a birth certificate. But when that birth certificate was signed, there was a declaration made that I was a sinner, that I was lost. And whatever day you were born, you might as well say that there was a declaration made for every single one of us. You put your month and day and, and, and year and every single one of us, a declaration was written that you're lost, you're lost, you're lost, you're lost. We're all lost and we're all headed to hell and we're all, a declaration was made that we had to have Jesus. That nobody was righteous, nobody. Romans 3 and 23 says this, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. And as cute as we all were when we were little, and as cuter as we were as we grew up, we're still sinners. We're still lost. We're still uh, in need of a Savior. Every single last one of us has sinned. Now, I didn't have to go and teach Harper how to tell a lie. I didn't have to go through classes and trainings. We just are, were that way. We're, we're rotten to the core. When you look at the, the grand scheme of it, we're all sinners. We've all come short of God's glory. No matter how dressed up we get for church, and no matter how uh, thick our Bible is that we carry into the house of God, we're all sinners, and we've all, uh, even at our most innocent state, at being born, we're all sinners. But look at, look at John 8 and 31. It says, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. They some there that believed, and they some there that realized, and they said, hey, we are, that declaration was made, and I am a sinner, and I am lost. But then it says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. 
The only thing that will make you free is not, uh, not anything that we can do. It's the truth. We're all sinners, and they all realize that. And the one thing that will make you free is what verse 32 says, and it's the truth. The truth will make you free. Then you read there in verse 33, it says, They answered him, We be Abraham's seed. We were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou that we're, that we're made free? And what they're saying there is they said, We've never been in bondage. I've never been uh, chained up. I've never been a servant. I've never been a slave. How in the world are you going to make me free if I've never been uh, bound up? Well, see, they didn't realize that that declaration was made. They didn't realize there's a declaration written, and you're declared unrighteous at birth. You take you take that breath, and we're all we're all sinners. And what they realized there in verse 33 is they said we were never in bondage. We're of Abraham. Right there makes you a sinner. You're of Abraham. We're of man. You're of Abraham's seed. You're of man's seed. Then you are a sinner. We all are. But they said there, we're never in bondage. We've never been locked up. We've never been chained up. How are you going to make us free if we've never been bound up? Well, they didn't realize there was a declaration made. And at birth, we're all sinners. And at birth, we all need it. And even as we grow and even as, as good as we are, you may be top of the class at school and, and get awards at awards day, but it don't matter. What matters is, is Jesus in your heart because that declaration is made is, are you free or are you not? But it says there in verse 34, it says, Jesus answered them. He had an answer for them. Look what he says. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is a servant to sin. I see a seriousness to this declaration. It's not just a declaration saying I'm a sinner, but there's seriousness to it. Because if I'm a sinner, I am a servant to sin. I'm a slave to sin. It binds me up. It bounds me up. Uh, that's what sin does. And at birth, we're all sinners. And because of that sin, it says there in verse 34, you are a servant. I'm a slave. A servant kind of sounds like a, somebody serving your table or a waiter or something. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a slave. Somebody chained up. You wake up with that sin binding you up. You go to work with that sin binding you up. You lay down at bed. In the, got you a uh, pill at night, and that sin is still bound you up. That's what we're talking about, a servant to sin. The reason is, Romans 6, 23 says the wages of sin, the cost of sin, the price of sin is death. And that's what happens. There's a price to pay for it. I'm thankful this morning that Jesus paid the price, aren't you? Amen. That he paid my price. Yeah. That price was dead, and there's two prices that could be paid. It could be Jesus paying that, or it could be us paying that price, and that penalty is hell. And, and really, uh, if you look at death even deeper, it's separation from God. Separation from a holy and a loving Jesus. And if you might be listening saying, I didn't choose death. The wages of sin is death, but I didn't choose it. It don't matter. It chose you. Because that declaration is written saying you're a sinner and, 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 and sin cannot enter heaven. There will be no sin. There will be no tears. There will be no sorrow. There will be no heartache in heaven. And sin can't enter heaven. And you're de already declared a sinner at birth. So I see the first thing here this morning that, that there is a declaration made. The second thing I see is there's a dilemma here. Now, the word dilemma is the, means this. It's defined as a situation in which a difficult choice has to be made between two or more alternatives. Well, the dilemma here, what I'm trying to preach on here, is liberty or death. Liberty is the state of being free. So you've got one option. You can choose liberty and you can choose freedom and you can choose I can just go free. I can have peace and that's through Jesus. That's one option. Liberty. The other one is death. You know what death is? That's separation from God. That is an end to our life and that's that separation. So you can choose liberty or you can choose death. And I'll tell you, when I think of the word dilemma, that sounds to me like I'm in a pinch. Like I'm at a store trying to figure out which one of these I'm going to buy. But I'll tell you, when you think about this dilemma, there ain't much of a dilemma to it. I 
I'd rather choose liberty over death any day in the world. I mean, I don't know that that's much of a dilemma. That's much of a, a fight or much of a, a, a thing to have to worry about. Liberty or death. The dilemma is that, that situation, though, that we've got to choose one. Which one are we going to choose? Are we going to choose liberty or are we going to choose death? Christ, uh, are we going to choose Christ or death? Am I going to choose life or death? Am I going to choose freedom or death? And what a day other than July 4th to make that decision. Am I going to choose liberty and am I going to choose death? Which one's it going to be? Because let's look at verse 35. He says, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. See, there's a servant. That servant or that slave is not going to buy forever. Well, you can come into church. You can feel the part. You can look the part. But you ain't going to buy forever because guess what? You're a slave or you're a servant to sin. And sin won't enter heaven. But he says there in verse 36, the but, but, but the, or 35, but the son abideth forever. There's something special about being a son, and there's something different about being a slave. See, that servant's just a slave. That servant is a slave of sin. That servant has to answer to sin. That servant that can't abide with that family forever. That servant don't have an inheritance, but guess what? That son does. That son has an inheritance. That son has, a, ha, has something that they can claim from the family because they, they are, they're blood. They're considered a son or considered a daughter. My gosh. Liberty or death? A son or a servant? There's no decision to have to be made. It's that simple. But you know, there'll be some people that they'll let pride just hold them back. They'll let the fear of what somebody might think about them hold them back. But my gosh, a son or a servant, there's no decision there. He says there in verse 35 that a servant abideth not forever. See, that ser there's something different about a servant than different about a son. I'm sure they were totally different. I'm thinking back to that prodigal son. When he left the house, he left the father's house and went out into that world and, and found himself in the lowest state possible. He said even the servants at his, at his father's house had it better than I did out in this world. And that's the truth. But you get back with the father's house and then you be in the father's house and then you be a son, my gosh, think about how good that you got it. Romans 8 and 17 says, if, and if children, then heirs. So if you're a child, you're an heir. Then it says heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. See, that son has a right. A daughter has a right. And if you're a son or a daughter of Christ, we've got a right. We've got a right to be free, a right to live, a right to liberty. And which one are you going to choose, liberty or death? Which one are you going to choose this morning? A true child has an inheritance. A true child has a total different uh, makeup as a servant. They have an inheritance of the entire estate. We've got a part of every single thing that the father has. And my gosh, he's got it all. Love and joy and peace and comfort. I mean, the Father has everything. And if I'm a part of that, I inherited every bit. Because that's why Romans 8 and 17 says, And if children, then you're heirs. If you're heirs of God, you're joint heirs with Christ. Why? Well, that declaration was made. And I've got a dilemma here. There's a declaration, but now there's a dilemma. Do I want to live in liberty, and I want to be a son, and do I want to be an heir, heir? Do I want to inherit all this, or do I want to just choose death and be a servant, be a slave, and not abide in the house forever, and there will be a time come where they'll either be in heaven or be in hell. And we, part of us, uh, we have a part in every single thing that that father has. It says he's gone to prepare a place. That's when he left this earth, he went to prepare a place. He's still preparing it. That's a pretty big place. That's going to be a pretty nice place. A place I'd like to be a part of. You may say, preacher, what do I got to do? I mean, it, it's simple. If you just want to be a get liberty and be a son or a daughter of Christ, all you got to do is like ABCs. Admit that you're a sinner. Realize that you're a sinner. Then believe. Believe that he died on the cross, and on the third day he ra he's raised from the dead, and, and you're saved. And he did all that to carry on your sins. 
So admit, believe, and then just confess that he's Lord. Confess that he's Lord, but also give him the throne of your life. Confess that he's Lord, but live by following. Let him live and guide you. So I see two positions, and there's a dilemma here. Is it liberty or is it death? Is it going to be a servant or a slave and death? Or is it going to be a son or a daughter and liberty? So we see the declaration. We see the dilemma. But lastly, this morning, we're going to see the decision. See that declaration when we were born said, hey, everybody's sinners. Everybody's lost. We're all declared unsinners. We're all declared unrighteous. We're all, un no, no one's holy. But then that dilemma comes and there's a decision. A day has to come where you hear the gospel and you've heard it here today. You've heard it. So you've got to make a decision. No, every, everybody here will leave this door and give an account to heaven one day with what you did, with what you heard today. Because this is the gospel. There's some people in these foreign lands that will never hear what's preached here today. They, they won't hear the truth. They won't hear the fact that there's a hell and the fact that there's a heaven. But there's a dilemma. Is it going to be liberty or is it going to be death? Liberty is accepting Christ and accepting his work, not what we can do, not by our works, but that true liberty is just accepting Christ, the ABC. And then believe and confess. If we would just do those things, that's liberty. Or we can choose death, and that's really just simply doing nothing. You know, you do nothing, and that's death. Rejected him, and that's death. Letting pride just hold you back, that's death. That makes you a servant. That makes you a slave. Makes you headed to hell. So we see the declaration when we were born. We see the dilemma. But lastly, we see the decision. Look at verse 36. It says, And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. That's 35. Look at 36. If the son, therefore, shall make you free, he shall be free indeed. A decision has to be made, and we've got to decide something. Which one's it going to be? Is you going to let Jesus make you free? Are you going to let Jesus set you free? Or are you just going to have liberty? Or are we just going to keep the way we were, stay the way we were, and choose death? It's got to be one or the other. We, like, we live in a day where we like to find a middle ground on everything. We like to find a gray area where we don't offend nobody. And everybody can have their way. And everybody can leave smiling. But it ain't that way with the word of God. It's black or white. It's liberty or death. It's one or the other. And on July 4, 2021, I don't know a better message. I don't know a better thought that the Lord has given us other than what are you going to choose this morning? Are you going to choose liberty or are you going to choose death? Are you going to choose freedom and head to heaven? Or are you going to choose death and stay in your ways and continue to be a servant and not abide? In that house forever. Which one's it going to be? That's the message this morning. That's the thought. Maybe you're saying, well, I'll just wait. I'll just, I just won't make that decision today. Well, there's already a declaration. There's already a dilemma going on. It's either it, it's, it's liberty or death. Well, I'm going to wait on that decision. Well, you just made your decision. You just made that decision by saying, I'm going to wait. Because when you step out these doors, you may not be given another chance. As many a people uh, lose control of their car, or uh, somebody just be drunk on the side, celebrating the 4th of July on the wrong side of the road and hit you. We don't know. We're not promised tomorrow. So to say, I'm going to wait till tomorrow, it may not come. We have a decision that we have to make. And here's the thing you may be sitting here this morning and saying, Well, I made that decision. Well, guess what? I made that decision too on, on, on uh, October 9th. 2001. I made that decision too. But here's the thing. You can make that decision and turn toward death as well. And I'm not saying lose your salvation. What I'm saying is you can live dead. You can live not in the fullness of Christ. You can live and not live with the life that Christ gave you. How are you doing that? Well, here's what you're doing. You're not choosing liberty. You're not choosing Christ. You're choosing death. And the thing that we like to wrinkle our way out of sometimes, we hear liberty, we hear death, we hear lost or saved. 
we got to just push that to the side and say that don't involve us Christians. Well, the problem is sometimes maybe we're not living right. Maybe we're not um, uh, doing what we ought to do. And that's causing death to come upon other people. And they're choosing that. Well, if that's a Christian, then that's what, if that's what a Christian is, I don't want it. So this goes for saved. It goes for lost. What decision are we going to make? Are we going to choose liberty? Are we going to choose death? That's the message this morning. It's that simple. It's that plain. And that's it. Are you going to choose to be a son or a daughter? Maybe the Lord's been dealing with you over the course of a little bit of time. This is the day, July 4th. You'd never forget this day. July 4th, 2021, is the day I chose liberty. It also could be a day recorded in heaven. July 4th, 2021. The day you celebrate, what if the Lord opened the book? You get to heaven, he opens that book and says, you say, I'm a good person. I, I, I went to church. I read my Bible. I knew verses. Well, your name's not written in this book. And I'm sorry. You're condemned. And you're headed to hell. You didn't accept the blood. You didn't accept my son. No, 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 preach. No. no God, I, 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 my, 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 mom, my mom's over there. My dad. They, 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 they took me to church. They said I was. No. You've got to make that decision for yourself. That's a scary thing to hear this one, but it's the truth as I can ever say the truth. What if he opens that book one day and says, hey, July 4th, 2021, you heard that truth. You heard that preacher preach that truth. And you rejected that truth. And that book's closed. And you're headed to hell. And she comes to the can. Got two questions. Are you saved or are you lost? And if you are saved, are you choosing liberty? Is it liberty or is it death? She's going to stop the. And if you're listening online, you need to make that decision just as well.